we are here again at Embedded World at the booth of Embedded, Embedded Wizard. Another company, of course, that you know that I haven't heard of because you know that I haven't heard of nearly every single company in this world because it's so fast and dynamic. So we're joined here by Manuel, who's going to tell us all about his business, but more importantly, that relationship that you have with Ambic Semiconductor and why that's such an important part of what you do every day uh, and how they're helping you drive things forward with customers. It's really a pleasure to be there. He's also got Thank a really you. cool phrase that he's going to bring up in a minute. You'll know when you hear it. Thank you very much for being at our booth yep. and uh, yeah, looking forward to talking with you the next couple of minutes and to see how we can further on bring benefits for our customers at Good. the end when it comes to GUI. So tell us a little bit about Embedded Wizards first. Tell us about why you exist. Yeah, um, let's talk a little bit of history, why we are dealing with graphics. Uh, so in fact, we came out of a Siemens conductor manufacturer, which was at that time Siemens Halbleiter. So Siemens Halbleiter then moved on to Micronos Infineon. So this is a little bit the the, uh, so the legacy. History. Um, not, we have the other legacy, yeah? so we, we are dealing with, with embedded systems from the beginning. So the company right. itself is also 30 years plus old, meanwhile, um, based in Munich uh, and dealing with embedded software from the beginning. But as I said, coming from the semiconductor manufacturer domain means um, we know how to count bits and bytes at the end, uh, even if we were dinosaurs. Uh, so that is something that, that brings our customers a certain value because we really nail it down when it comes to yeah, implementing graphics. Right, so you're all about GUIs. Um, in fact, the company itself um, has multiple or two business units. Um, one is also based on, on the origin where we came from, which is um, uh, dealing with TV software. Uh, because at that time when we, when we started, um, we, we provided software for Siemens Hyperlight at that time. Um, especially in the domain for digital TV reception. So that means software solutions for EPG, for teletext, for OTTs, so over the top applications, uh, and video playback, IPTV stuff. And, and this is one business unit. Right. And then the other business unit is all dealing with graphics. And there we have our tool, but, Embedded Wizards. But you started life with that sort of uh, the digitalization and the interactive. A, a little bit before. So a digitalization bit. was then, I would say, five, six, seven years after we started the company, then dig digitalization came into into place. Uh, so this was this was more um, yeah, like like and development, yeah? right. like like we're doing all the time developments, and this was also development right. where we just. So, so would it be yeah. fair to say you sort of learned your trade in that in that interactive area of digital TV, and then you've taken you've learned what you've what you've got from that, and then you said how can we interact? Yeah, yeah. Other devices interact. Yeah, in, in fact, yes, that's 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 where we came from so for for all the consumer electronic devices, uh, yeah. and and sitting in front of a TV, and when you press the remote control, the volume up or volume down bar, then you get some. At that time, it was called an on-screen display, where you change the volume, for example, or change the program. And this was also our entry point to do the graphics on TV sets, uh, on the TV devices, or set-top boxes, PVRs, and these kind of, of, of appliances. And um, this was then the base to start, okay, not only dealing with, with the big screens, uh, let's do it in the same way on small screens, but not only then for the consumer electronic domain, then also for industrial automation, automotive, yeah. and so on. So we're here at Embedded World uh, with the growth of IoT devices everywhere, everything being connected. Everybody needs a GUI. Everybody needs their own way that their machine will interact with their customers. So why would they come to you? Um, good question. Um, in fact, something that, that is, is our, our core advantage compared to others because at the end you need to draw some pixels on display huh? so this is this is not not rocket science or something like that huh? but at the end you need to take care about the resources that you have huh? so that means you have a certain amount of flash memory you have a certain amount of, of RAM available um, you have a certain horsepower under the hood uh, which means you Sometimes when you're dealing with a microcontroller compared to a microprocessor, it's not, not that big one, yeah? because when it goes into the masters, yeah? then you need to take care about the bomb, the bills of material, so that the price itself gets gets down to, to the minimum. Yeah? So yeah. that's the reason why customers then go ahead with a microcontroller, because it's cheaper at the end. Um, and 
the designs and the resources and at the end you want to have a sexy UI and an a fluid and a very fast UI because everyone has, an, has a mobile phone, an Android phone, smartphone in his pocket yep. and is, is used to, to have these kind of sexy devices. Right. And customers we, actually, we actually have a We Love Sexy Devices t-shirt yeah. Yeah, which I will bring to you yeah. at some point over the next two or three days. So what you're talking about is because people are used to having these very easy to use navigate GUIs, they're used to that, they need that in the industrial environment. But you're also then making the point that, are you saying that the GUIs, the GUIs are also quite power hungry and they also need, you need to understand the whole system. Absolutely. The whole system yes. when you're integrating and embedded a GUI and that's why somebody should come to you. No, in, in, in fact, when at the end, when you say drawing pixels, uh, it's just small dots uh, with, the, with the color information at the end. But um, as soon as the, the, the screens get bigger and, and the design requirements get more intense, um, you really need to, to take care that the available amount of time that you have on the CPU is, is consumed less than as, as possible at the end. Right. Right. So otherwise you, you get a very bad performance uh, and you do not want to use the device later on. Right. Uh, so that's so, it. So take it so, so you help you help the design engineer sort out having a sexy GUI. Love saying that, I keep saying it, sexy GUI, sexy GUI. And then you also very, very important to you, you need to understand how that interacts with the hardware. Yes. And so putting that everything into a nutshell, that means we have we have, let's call it this this GUI triangle of tension. Yeah, we have the design requirements. There we go. It took it took some time, but we got to the triangle of tension. Uh, we have we have there the design requirements, we have the performance. And finally, we have the hardware limitations or the, the resource constraints that we have on the hardware. And our our mission is really to to keep or to, to get a software engineer um, up and running with the most simplified solution to have to yeah, to, to tackle this down. Uh, right, right. So simplify the GUI development as best as possible. Good. And then, how does that relationship then work with this manufacturer? Ambic, tell us about that relationship there and tell us how that fits in with this triangle of tension. Yeah, um, Ambic is, is very famous for power efficient devices. Uh, so that means for um, wearables mainly. Um, and this is something where what Ambic can very, very do well. Uh, um, now compared with, with our solution, uh, in order to have these kind of uh, uh, GUIs at the end, um, you also need to take care that the software itself is also power efficient. Uh, otherwise, if you have a power efficient hardware and a non power efficient software, at the end you get a non power efficient solution at the end. Uh, this yeah. is not something to achieve. So um, Embedded Wizard with its own also power efficiency, what does it mean? For example, we are following a so-called cooperative model. That means you only need to draw something on the screen when it's required to be drawn and not all the time or only to draw things that have been changed. Um, think about if you have a button and the button is overlaid by a gauge, for example, uh, and, yeah. and the gauge changes um, and the button, for example, should also reflect that change, something simple. Um, but if, if the, the gauge is overlaying on the bottom, then even if the gauge is changing, we say, okay, there's nothing visible at the end because the gauge is on top of the button, then we do not process the button, for example. And this yeah. takes care about the CPU yeah. consumption and hence also so, on the power. So, so in summary, when, when, when we're talking about your relationship with, with, with Ambic, they're all about wearables, they're all about low power. But the importance there is, is, that, is that the interface is what you're actually describing is the interface so it uses less power should be as elegant and as user friendly but only doing the things that you really need it to do rather than all the things that you might design in yeah. so it's got to be elegant it's got to be so as you drawing down less power yeah. that's the relationship so, so you you're very much embedded forgive the phrase yeah. um, you're very much embedded in the whole idea of the wearable being low power, so everything about this device has to be low power, including the GUI. Absolutely. So, so, so you need so to make that very efficient. So it only has so many slides, so many buttons, so many interfaces. That's what. So that's yeah. that's how this relationship works so nicely for you. Yes, absolutely. So this is our advantage that we bring into the whole solution uh, to also provide a power efficient software stack. And when you think about this GUI triangle of tension, you have the hardware resources and. Uh, uh, this is something that, that yeah, needs to be, be taken into account as best as possible and with our approach really to, 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 to be uh, less greedy uh, in terms of, yeah. of CPU resources, yeah. etc. So let me ask you a question, let, let, let sure. me ask a question, you know, 
your average design engineer, they're thinking low power, they're thinking application, they're thinking how do they get the information, how do they get the information from their sensor? How much time do they actually give attention to the to the GUI? Does that where where, where in the design cycle does the GUI come? And yeah. Where would you put it? Yeah, so that's that's a good point because when when we are dealing with customer projects, you have two roles. You have a design engineer, and you have a software engineer or the firmware engineer. So that means the design specification comes from the designer, and at the end, the software engineer needs to to implement it, needs to develop it. Um, and this is now something with our solution that we have. A, a less code approach that we have uh, what you see is what you get approach a full featured IDE that the, the design specifications that the software engineer gets from the designer can implement in a very iterative way and provide back to the designer very efficiently uh, intermediate states where the designer can see okay that's what, what I was looking for uh, that was my intention and to have a very um, yeah, close and, 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 and interleaved the design process and development process when it comes to the whole HMI at the end. Right, right. So when when somebody comes uh, when somebody comes to talk to you, have they will they have already chosen Ambic or where 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 does that relationship start? Do they come with you to to to, to the wearable or do you work in partnership with Ambic? How does that work? Uh, I would say it's it's um, of both possibilities we, we are facing at. Um, Sometimes the customer has already chosen the, the, the MCU of choice, so the MBIG one, for example. Um, and um, sometimes they say, okay, I want to have this design, what MCU can you recommend? Uh, and then we are referring them, depending on the, on the requirements, to MBIG, for example. Right. So it's, it's, it's both. Right. Uh, so the real benefit is the fact that you have real good experience, hands-on experience, with understanding how the whole bill of material, including the, the low power um, MCU from Ambic, has to draw less power off, so it needs a nice, elegant GUI that is going to understand the, the application, draw less power, not be too complicated, and create a nice, elegant, easy to use, low power solution. Absolutely correct. Perfect. Yes. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. Good luck with your relationship and partnership with Ambic. Thank you. Sounds like it's going to be very successful and uh, we look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest Thank of your you. show. Thank you. Take care.